Hello and welcome to APM Research, The End Times, Revelations and Prophecy. In this video we will be showing you how the end times, revelations and prophecies relate to the workings of the realm and that they are in fact regular cycles that keep on repeating every 400 years. We will also be showing you some of the information regarding the halos we see around our sun and moon. Very interesting information that is in our recorded history. Sandra will be presenting you some fantastic imagery and information from her new book, The Book of Miracles. We will also be overlaying modern captures of the same celestial events happening now, which proves we are entering this cycle. This we will also confirm with data. Scriptural events and prophecies also decode into this same event. All yours, Sandra. In the year 1 BC, an oil well appeared near Rome on the far bank of the Tiber, and oil flowed from it abundantly for the whole day. And on the day of the Nativity, a golden circle appeared around the sun for the whole day. And the statue of Romulus collapsed, as did the Temple of Peace. It should be noted here that a different ruler was in place at that time. On the day after the death of Julius Caesar, three suns appeared in the east in the early morning sky which then moved towards each other so that they merged into one. Also at that time, an ox on the outskirts of Rome asked the farmer why he was working so hard, since before very long there would be more of a shortage of people than grain. In the year AD 1173, three suns were seen in the west in the month of September, when the sun was about to set, and after two hours the outer two disappeared, and the other one set after that. In the year AD 1174, three moons appeared in the German lands with the sign of a cross through their middle, separate and entirely over them, so that the moons were shining behind it. In the year AD 1304, three moons and a comet appeared, seen around midnight for three months, in the German lands and in Italy, just as it is painted here. Seen in the year 1519, on the 11th of January, the day before the demise of Emperor Maximilian of Glorious Remembrance, In 1520, on the fifth day of the month of January, the three suns were seen in Vienna in the morning at sunrise, and these are known as parafog. This image depicts two scenes that were seen in the sky in 1520. On the left, in the year 1520, on the 4th of January, this sign was seen in Vienna for three hours until five after midday. This is called halo and is like the moon. And on the right, afterwards, after midnight, at one o'clock or a little later, this sign was seen. In the year 1520, on the 6th day of the month of January, at around 8 o'clock in the evening in the city of Vienna, the sign was seen around the glow of the moon. In 
In the year 1520, on the seventh day of the month of January, three suns, which are called Parahelius, were seen in Vienna in Austria from sunrise until 10 or a little later. In the year 1520, on the sixth day of the month of January, this sign around the sun, which is called Halo Maximus, was seen in Vienna at three o'clock in the afternoon. In the year 1527, on the 17th of February, three suns were seen in Corfbrunn, enclosed within two rainbows in the sky, adjacent to the mountains. And the two outer suns were red on the sides facing the sun, in the middle, and yellow on the sides facing the rainbow, and a white streak went through the middle, and the shining of the inner rainbow was so yellow that no one could see into it because of its brightness. In the year 1528, on the 16th day of the month of May, between the 11th and 12th hour after midday, this formation was seen in the sky in Augsburg, on the sun or around the sun, and stayed for about one and a half hours or longer. In the year 1528, on the 16th day of the month of May, such rainbows were seen in Innsbruck, appearing here and there, while at the same time three suns were to be seen, and a moon as a half beside them, as is painted here. In the year 1533, three suns shone at the same time, as if they had fiery clouds around them, and they stayed over the city of Munster, as if the city and its houses were burning, as painted here. In the year 1538, such a manifestation was seen around the sun near Schonfeld, and moreover, three suns were seen at once, but also the curious ring stayed in the sky brightly for about four hours. In the year 1541, on the 28th day of March, three suns in a triangle with a rainbow around them were seen here in Augsburg. The rainbow was seen first and then last. Two of the suns disappeared along with the rainbow and the sun on the right remained. Fifteen forty five and on the previously mentioned day there came a terrible darkness such that the sky was completely black so that people could not see one another at all. The darkness lasted until the next day, that is the 30th of March, until 9 o'clock in the morning. Then the day came back and three beautiful rainbows were seen, on which was seated a beautiful angel. He was seen for about one and a half hours. After that he disappeared again and fine weather then followed. 1546. In the year 1546, on February the 26th at 8 o'clock in the morning, this wonderful and strange vision was seen by an honourable inhabitant of the city of Kashur, situated in the land of Hungary, and by other reputable inhabitants who earnestly requested it to be put into print, and the information they provided about it was truthful concerning how they saw over the city what is painted above, up in the air for days and hours. 1547. In the year 1547, on the 29th day of the month of January, two rainbows were seen here in Augsburg around the sun and between the clouds for a long time in the morning and in the evening. Fifteen forty nine. 
In AD 1549, on Simon and Jude's day, such a manifestation was seen in broad daylight near Nordlingen and in other places in the Rise and in Swabia, just as recorded and painted here. fifteen forty nine. In AD fifteen forty nine, on October the sixth, such a manifestation was seen around the moon at night in the Rise and in Swabia on a clear night. fifteen forty nine in the year fifteen forty nine on the twenty eighth of October on St Simon and St Jude's Day, this manifestation was seen here in the sky, namely three suns and a rainbow which everyone saw. Several people also saw a sword over the sun. fifteen fifty one Truthful report of how, on the 21st of March of this 51st year, five sons were seen in Leipzig by many trustworthy persons. 1551 1,551 years after the birth of Christ in the month of March, such an occurrence was seen in Swabia in broad daylight on more than one occasion. 1551 1,551 years after the birth of Christ, such an occurrence was seen in the sky in France and in Lorraine in broad daylight, which came forth and could be seen for more than a day. 1551 As you can see people, the halo events we are recording in the here and now translate as the same celestial events from various parts of our recorded history. The end times decode as the end of a cycle. Revelations, this simply means the construct will reveal itself and there are some events we all need to be aware of that are connected to it. The halos we are seeing around our luminaries are revealing themselves as they have in our past. They are a reminder of how our realm really works. The Geo, Petro and Hieroglyphs record the same information, the workings of the realm. Those characters do not represent people, they represent the technologies in the underworld, the angels sealed below. Scriptures tells us it is their prison. I decode the seal of the 144,000 to be the 144,000 sarcophagi below sealed rooms that contain the Creator's technological glory, the glory that is responsible for the creation and movement of our luminaries, and it plays a big part in most of nature itself. The sarcophagi recovered from ancient sites are location markers for the technologies below those locations. Tutankhamun, for instance, represents a king of a group of technologies below that area. Our Decoding Scriptures 2 video shows how we connect the sarcophagi to the seraphim from scriptures. The main calendar may also have been counting down to this event, as I'm sure the ancients knew how all this worked and planned for it. From scriptures we can also connect the event to passages such as Isaiah 13.13 13. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble and the earth will shake from its place at the wrath of the Lord Almighty in the day of his burning anger or Isaiah 24 1. See, the Lord is going to lay waste the earth and devastate it. He will ruin its face and scatter its inhabitants. The Dark Ages in our history may also be related to these events. Not even an empire can survive this event as so much chaos and destruction seems to take place, empires will crumble 
and we see this everywhere as we look back in history and find devastation in civilizations that were in their golden age and then it just stopped. We see destruction on a large scale when looking into these ancient sites. We are a species that seem to have dementia or amnesia. We are surrounded by all these ancient sites and no one seems to remember the true meanings. Everyone has forgotten. This of course is compounded by wars, takeovers, indoctrination, pseudoscience, bad decodings, misdirection and even blatant and obvious lies. It would seem there are people out there that do not want us to know our true history and how this realm really works. So we take a look into Hoppy Prophecy. Do you remember back in 1997 the Hoppy Elders appeared with Dr. Robert Ghost Wolf on Art Bell's Coast to Coast show? They spoke to millions of wary listeners around the world as they predicted the coming of the Blue Star Kashina and that the Purifier, the Red Star Kashina, would follow shortly after the twins, Haley Bop, had passed from our heavens. They spoke about us seeing strange things going on with animals, frogs with six legs, rabbits with four ears, animals being born with both genders. They spoke of earth changes and firestorms, and they talked about the eight thunders prophecies and the pale prophet. The following is an excerpt from the last cry Native American prophecies and tales of the end times by Dr. Robert Ghost Wolf, 1994. To 2004. It has appeared in numerous articles over the web and in magazines all over the world. The story of the Blue Kachina is a very old story. Very old. I have been aware of the story of the Blue Kachina since I was very young. I was told this story by grandfathers who are now between 80 and 108 years of age. Frank Walters also wrote about Sasquushohu, the Blue Star Kachina, in the Book of the Hoppy. The story came from the grandfather Dan, oldest Hoppy. It was told to me that the first Blue Kachina would start to be seen at the dances and would make his appearance known to the children in the plaza during the night dance. This event would tell us that the end times are very near. Then the Blue Star Kachina would physically appear in our heavens, which would mean that we were in the end times. In the final days, we will look up in our heavens and we will witness the return of the two brothers who helped create this world in the birthing time. Wagan Goha is the guardian of our North Pole and his brother Polangoya is the guardian of the South Pole. In the final days, the Blue Star Kachina will come to be with his nephews and they will return to earth to its natural rotation which is counterclockwise. Please note from an APM research perspective we do not believe in a spinning globe model. We believe in a flat world model and it is our luminaries that are rotating. So this is suggesting we may get a counter rotation of the luminaries. This fact is evidenced in many petroglyphs that speak of the zodiac and within the Mayan and Egyptian pyramids. The rotation of the earth has been manipulated by not so benevolent star beings. The twins will be seen in our northwestern skies. They will come and visit to see who still remembered the original teachings flying in their patu waters or flying shields. They will bring many of their star family with them in the final days. The return of the Blue Star Kachina, who is also known as Nan Ga Shohu, will be the alarm clock that tells us of the new day and the new way of life, a new world that is coming. This is where the changes will begin. We will start as fires that burn within us, and we will burn up with desires and conflict if we do not remember the original teachings and return to the peaceful way of life. Not far behind the twins will come the purifier, the Red Kachina, who will bring the day of purification. On this day the earth, her creatures and all life as we know it will change forever. There will be messengers that will precede this coming of the purifier. They will leave messages to those on earth who remember the old ways. 
The messages will be found written in the living stone through the sacred grains and even the waters. Crop circles have been found in ice. It mentions in brackets. From the purifier will issue forth a great red light. All things will change in their manner of being. Every living thing will be offered the opportunity to change from the largest to the smallest thing. Those who return to the ways given to us in the original teachings and live in a natural way of life will not be touched by the coming of the purifier. They will survive and build the new world. Only in the ancient teachings will the ability to understand the message be found. It is important to understand that these messages will be found upon every living thing, even within our bodies, even within a drop of our blood. All life forms will receive the messages from the twins, those that fly, the plants, even the rabbit. The appearance of the twins begins a period of seven years which will be our final opportunity to change our ways. Everything we experience is all a matter of choice. Many will appear to have lost their souls in these final days. So intense will the nature of the changes be that those who are weak in spiritual awareness will go insane. For we are nothing without spirit. They will disappear, for they are just hollow vessels for anything to use. Life will be so bad in the cities that many will choose to leave this plane, some in whole groups. Only those who return to the values of the old ways will be able to find peace of mind, for in the earth we shall find relief from the madness that will be around us. It will be a very hard time for women with children, for they will be shunned and many of the children in these times will be unnatural. Some beings from the stars, some from past worlds, some will even be created by man in an unnatural manner and will be soulless. Many of people in this time will be empty in spirit, they will have sampuku, no life force in their eyes. As we get close to the time of arrival, the purifier, there will be those who walk as ghosts through the cities. Through canyons, they will have constructed in their man-made mountains. Those that walk through these places will be very heavy in their walk. It will appear almost painful as they take each step, for they will be disconnected from their spirit and the earth. After the arrival of the twins, they will begin to vanish before your eyes like so much smoke. Others will have great deformities, both in the mind and upon their bodies. There will be those who would walk in the body that are not from this reality, for many of the gateways that once protected us will be opened. There will be much confusion, confusion between sexes and children and their elders. Life will get very perverted and there will be little social order in these times. Many will ask for those mountains themselves to fall upon them to end their misery. Still others will appear as if untouched by what is occurring. The ones who remember the original teachings and have reconnected their hearts and spirits. Those who remember who their mother and father is. The Pahana who have left to live in the mountains and forest. When the purifier comes, we will see him first as a small red star, which will come very close and sit in our heavens watching us. Watching us to see how well we have remembered the sacred teachings. This purifier will show us many miraculous signs in our heavens. In this way, we will know a creator is not a dream. Even those who do not feel their connection to spirit will see the face of the creator across the sky. Things unseen will be felt very strongly. Many things will begin to occur that will not make sense, while reality will be shifting back in and out of the dream state. There will be many doorways to the lower world that will open at this time. Things long forgotten will come back to remind us of our past creations. All living things will want to be present for this day when time ends and we enter the forever cycle of the fifth world. We will receive many warnings allowing us to change our ways from below the earth as well as above. This one morning in a moment we will awaken to the red dawn. The sky will be the colour of blood 
many things will then begin to happen that right now we are not sure of their exact nature, for much of reality will not be as it is now. There will be many strange beasts upon the earth in those days, some from the past and some that we have never ever seen. The nature of mankind will appear strange in these times, we walk between worlds and we will house many spirits even within our bodies. After a time we will walk again with our brothers from the stars and rebuild this earth, but not until the purifier has left his mark upon the universe. No thing living will go untouched here or in the heavens. The way through this time it is said it is to be found in our hearts and reuniting with our spiritual self, getting simple and return to living with and upon the earth and in harmony with our creatures, remembering that we are the caretakers, the fire keepers of the spirit. Our relatives from the stars are coming home to see how well we are fed in our journey. The pictures enclosed in this presentation are of the human beings, my hobby grandfathers, they were telling you truth. There is still time for you to change. You may find some of the above information disturbing. We will be doing a part two to this to break these events down further. Okay, now let's look at the data. Professor Valentina Zarkova gave a presentation of her climate and the solar magnetic field hypothesis at the Global Warming Policy Foundation in October 2018. Zarkova models solar sunspot and magnetic activity. Her models have run at a 93% accuracy and her findings suggest a super grand solar minimum could begin in 2020. A super grand solar minimum would have four magnetic fields out of phase. There was about 40 to 60 years of cold weather 350 years ago. This was a Maunder minimum of lower solar activity. The historical cold weather had two magnetic fields out of phase. Zarkova is predicting a cooling effect that is 2.5 to 4 times larger than the Maunder minimum. Zarkova's analysis shows an 8 watts per square metre decrease in TSI total solar irradiance. A 2015 nature study looked at 2 watts per square metre decrease causing a 0.13 minus degrees Celsius effect. A four times larger effect would be 0.5 minus degrees Celsius. Zarkova believes the warming models are including the warming effect of increased solar activity. If she is correct there would be cooling and the warming models would be wrong. Let's go back in time and check out the last mini ice age. So what is that? It's the time period between 1300 and 1850 where we were at a climatic minimum. In the 13th century, pack ice began advancing southwards in the North Atlantic as well as glaciers in Greenland. Evidence has shown that glaciers expanded almost worldwide during this time frame. As we can see here, a map showing how far down the ice and snow expanded. We can imagine how this affected life on Earth. Cold summers and ice growth intensified greatly from 1430 to 1455. We can see now why people dressed in layers, as we he see here some different examples of the attire worn. This natural occurrence played havoc with agriculture and the sun's warmth, as well as ocean circulation and volcanoes. As summers become more unreliable in Europe and North America, they began to experience famines. From 1315 to 1317, Europe experienced the Great Famine. They had to learn to adapt to producing food 
to the unrelenting cold and rains, dark and snow. Alpine villagers lived on a bread made from ground nut shells mixed with barley and flour. This is just one example. Loss of life rose dramatically during these times for less food and more illnesses were occurring. The effects recorded from the Earth's ocean circulation being messed up are due to thermohaline circulation. Factors that control this are the temperature and salt content. Any great change in these factors will affect the circulation belts of the world waters. Mexico had, has records from Aztec and Mayan relating to the periods of severe cold and droughts. In South Africa, sediment cores show colder conditions between 1570 and 1820. A 3,000 year temperature reconstruction method based on the rate of stalagmite growth in caves in South America also backed the cold periods from 1500s to 1800s. Sea level data for the Pacific Islands suggests that sea level in the region fell in two stages. Once in 1270 and again in 1475. This was due to a 1.5 Celsius degree drop in temperatures, which was determined from the oxygen isotope analysis. This led to the increase in the La Nina frequency, the most intense occurring in the southern oscillation activity in the mid 17th century. Tree ring data from Patagonia shows cold episodes during 1270 to 1380 and again from 1520 to 1670. How they can tell this is when the rings are wider it shows normal weather, but when the rings become narrower and closer together it shows wetter, colder climate changes. Many explorations also recorded increase in the glaciers and ice packs from exploration to exploration over this time period. All of this happening led to unstable volcanic activities as well. There's recordings of a 50 year span with long episodes of highly rich sulfur er eruptions occurring all over the world. This of course would lead to the sun being blocked out that can last for two years after each explosion. When a volcano emits high sulfur it creates sulfur oxide gas. When it goes into our upper atmosphere it turns to sulfuric acid particles. That rains down onto the lands. This is corrosive to metals and tissue. It would char wood and most organic matter, but it is unlikely to actually cause fires. As we can see here, I have mapped out some of the volcanic activity that occurred. There were many more erupting at this time, but I could only fit I couldn't fit it all on the map, so these are some of the examples of what occurred during the 50 year period spoken about prior, which was the height of the activity. However, these eruptions actually went on from the mid 1200s through the 1860s, the entire 400 year span of the mini ice age. In 1816, it was also recorded to be the year without summer and was reported that frost and snow fell during June and July in both New England and Northern Europe. So, the last effect I would like to discuss on this occurrence is the witch trials. 
The beginning of this began in the 1380s, just as the ice began. European populations began to link magic and weather making. The victims were being accused for the climate decline. The witch hunts began in the 1430s, and by 1480s it was widely accepted that witches should be held accountable for the poor weather, livestock losses, epidemics, cows that gave too little milk, late frost that lasted and lasted, and unknown diseases. Basically, as the temps dropped, the witch trials rose. And when the temperatures began to increase, the trials would decline. Although not everyone agreed with this, and the argument wasn't whether they existed, but rather could they control the weather. But by the height of the hunts and trials, most agreed that the witches could control natural forces, and they paid for it with their lives. So, on that note, I'll wrap up this information on the Little Ice Age and the effects of it. Thank you. Professor Valentina Zarkova has demonstrated here that her data also coincides with the cycle we are describing here, the Mini Ice Age, an event that reveals wonderful sights in our heavens which reveals the true nature of our realm, events they are trying to hide. Now I mentioned earlier a counter-rotation of the luminaries, let's look into this further. The sun will rise from the west. This is referenced in many scriptures. The Hopi prophecy also mentions this. Mainstream will probably call this a pole shift. Let me draw your attention to Walter Russell's winding and unwinding of the cosmic clock. This is a repeating cycle. We are near the end of one cycle. Now it may reverse the opposite way. What it is all suggesting is that the north, south, east and west poles will flip the opposite way to which they are now. We would still see the sun coming from the direction we see it coming from now, but the magnetic pole flip will now have this direction marked as the west, and the west becomes the new east. The north becomes the new south, and the south becomes the new north. Another option is that the sun does come from our west and sets in the east. I guess we won't truly know until this event happens. The cosmic clock is a cycle of compression and expansion. This process generates cold and heat. It would seem we are going into the cooling cycle of the cosmic clock spring. The celestial reveals we see, as with our sun's halo, is not restricted to being revealed by light particles trapped in ice crystals. Water vapor can also form around the halos due to their electromagnetic nature. Light particles trapped in liquids and ice will try to interact with the halo thus revealing its profile and this is why we are seeing them. The halo projections can also be seen through clouds, fog and mist when viewed from above. These are projections from below that certain conditions allow us to see. The ether is full of positively and negatively charged particles. It is these that play a part in highlighting the electromagnetic fields around us. You can also see this electromagnetic data being revealed with rainbows. Water droplets and light particles help reveal their profiles at various altitudes. Time lapse the rainbows and you will find some move and some don't. You can also locate electromagnetic data using your hosepipe. You are not creating a rainbow you are revealing electromagnetic data. We are surrounded by it as such is the nature of this realm. We are seeing electromagnetic data in the visible spectrum. There is much much more going to be revealed in our heavens so be sure to have your cameras at the ready. The construct is revealing itself. On the subject of mud floods, melting ice will certainly play a part in this as well as rising seas causing liquefaction. Remember, tsunamis may occur during these destructive events. We hope this video and information helps you with your own research, and as this data is clearly showing, plan for cold times ahead. 
we will be making a part 2 of this video where we will cover other events from recorded history that relate to this cycle. I will be speaking some verses from the Bible that will connect to the research. Matthew chapter 24 verse 7 speaks, For nations will arise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in virus places. Luke chapter 21 verse 11 speaks, there will be great earthquakes and virus places, famine, pestilence, and there will be tears and great signs from heaven. Luke chapter 21 verse 25 speaks, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations and public cities because of the warren of the sea and the wave. Luke chapter 21 verse 26 speaks, People fading with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10 speaks, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with the work, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the work that are done on it will be exposed. Revelation chapter 8, verse 8 and 9, speak, describe a burning mountains falling into the sea. The result is massive destruction and massive loss of life. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 6 8 You will be visited by the Lord of hosts with thunder and earthquake and a loud noise with windstorm and tempest and flame of consuming fire. Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 and when I saw the Lamb open the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, like the south clock of boat hair, and the whole moon turned blood red. Revelation chapter 8, verse 5. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and the hurdle into the earth. And there were peals of thunder and rumbling and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Revelation chapter 11 verse 19 speaks, Then the temple of God in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. And there were flashes of lightning, rumbling, and peals of thunder, and an earthquake, and a great hailstone. Revelation chapter 16 verse 18 speaks, And there were flashes of lightning, and rumbling, and peals of thunder, and a great earthquake, the likes of which had not occurred since men were upon the earth. So mighty was the great quake, 